Hello everyone, my name is Natalusha, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create the perfect sugar cookie recipe for cookie cutters and cutting cookies. Because the problem that a lot of people have with cutting cookies is that when they bake, a lot of intricate details, like something you would get from this cookie cutter, it says happy birthday, the letters are very intricate and thin next to each other, Generally, when you try to cut something like this into sugar cookie dough or any other kind of dough, it would just puff out and then you wouldn't even be able to read what it, read what it says. So, to avoid this problem, I will now show you the perfect no-spread sugar cookie recipe and the cookie will look exactly like you did when you cut it out, but it'll be baked. All of these cookie cutters that you see right here were custom designed and 3D printed by me. And I sell them on my Etsy store, Sucker3D, as well as the eBay store, Party Paradise. All of my cookie cutters um, are, well, designed by myself, I don't plagiarize, and um, they are all um, personalized. So if you would like to order one of my cookie cutters and make any sort of change, like for instance, on a happy birthday cookie cutter, you could put happy birthday Martha, or even order your own custom cookie cutter that I will make however you want it. I'll include a link to my Etsy and the eBay store Party Paradise where I also sell my cookie cutters down in the description below. Please be sure to check it out. Let's start making our dough. For this, you will need flour, sugar, our secret ingredient, cornstarch. And cornstarch is exactly what makes the cookies hold together so well and not droop all over the place. So this is the magic, super secret, amazing ingredient. We have some salt, some butter, eggs, and vanilla extract. There will be no baking powder, no baking soda, because that's exactly what makes it kind of poof all over the place. And well, cornstarch does the job way better as well. Now we're going to add all of our dry ingredients into a mixing bowl to receive. So we're gonna sift it all together. We will not, however, add the sugar yet. We're gonna whisk it all together just so that everything is well incorporated. Now we're going to beat our butter for maybe 30 seconds. So just gonna put our two sticks of butter in. Now add one cup of sugar to our butter. Now beat the butter and sugar together. Now we add our two eggs and a little bit of vanilla. Now we add our dry ingredients in parts. This is what we got. This nice, consistent, wonderful, formable cookie dough. So now we're going to take our dough and divide it into two equal parts on two silicone nonstick baking pads. And I really like these silicone baking mats because um, it, I mean, you can use parchment paper or anything else if you don't have um, a silicone mat, but these are really cool because you can roll your dough on them, chill your dough on them, and bake your dough on them. So they're basically all purpose. And so now what we're going to do um, is we're going to roll them in a special way that does not require the use of flour. And so we're just going to use our plastic wrap here and we're going to form our dough into kind of a rectangular shape. Fold in both sides and then turn over our dough. And we're just gonna take out these parts Put it back. Got this part. 
put it back. And now we have our little rectangle here and we're going to take our handy dandy rolling pin and we're gonna roll out our dough underneath our plastic wrap. So you're gonna roll it out as evenly as you can till you get the shape you want. The great thing about this method is that you don't need any flour because nothing sticks to each other because of the plastic wrap in this method. So the reason why it's better not to use flour like I'm doing here is because the flour toughens up your cookie and then you it's more like a cracker than a cookie at that point because whenever you re-roll your dough and you take the scraps and you make them into more cookies, then you have to use more and more flour and you just get a solid rock cookie and that's not what we want. Here we're going to get nice tender tasty cookies. So now that we have our general shape that we want, we're going to find whatever excess we have, like right here, it's going over, it's not what we want. So we're just gonna chop that off like this along the blue line. Or if your silpat has a border, if it doesn't just chop it off where you think it's best. And then I'm just gonna add this to the other pile. Um, and now we're going to feel where it's uneven, like where it's thicker than other places, where it's thinner than other places. And we're just going to use our hands to kind of push dough from the thick spots onto the thinner spots. So mine's actually pretty good right now. So I don't have to do too. So what we want is about a quarter of an inch or seven millimeters thickness. That is perfect for cutting cookies, especially with my cookie cutters, which are specifically made for quarter of inch cookies. So now once it's like this, we're going to send it off into the fridge to chill for about 20, 30 minutes. While our first portion is chilling, we're going to repeat the process with the second piece of dough. So our cookie dough just came out of the fridge and it is completely chilled and firm and ready for cutting. So I'm just going to use a variety of the different cookie cutters that I made. You might want to dip your cookie cutters in some flour before you start, but that's only if you want to. And know. there's some flour over here, so um, I'll just use it on my card capture soccer cookie cutter here. And then this one's really cool. This one is an inverted press. So I'm gonna go dip, dip, and we're going to plop it down right here, just like this. And then you turn it over on the other side, and then you press it in like this. And so that makes it like this. And I didn't cut it through all the way, darn it. All right, there we go. <laughs> now it's an actual cookie. So I'm just gonna, you know, um, since I make custom and personalized cookie cutters, if you like this dog paw and you want um, your dog or cat's name inside of it, then you can just put that in the personalization box on my Etsy page and I'll do it for you. If you want happy birthday Martha or happy birthday whoever else, you can ask for that too, you can do that. I can do a lot of things. While our dough is still cold and fresh out of the fridge, we're going to remove all of the excess dough around our cut shapes. And if it's too warm and it's very hard to take them off, then just put the whole thing in the fridge for another 10 minutes to chill and then try again. So now we're going to wrap all of our excess into one nice little ball, like so. And then we're going to Use the same exact method as last time to smooth it out. And then we're going to put it on the same silk pat after this is baked, which we are going to put in the oven right now. Now we're going to put it in the oven for 12 minutes at 375 Fahrenheit. So these are what our cookies turned out to be. They've got some nice golden brown edges. It just kind of depends on how long you bake them for. And it's also because I've made a whole bunch of different kinds of cookie cutters. Generally, you just use one cookie cutter and then everything would be the same because it bakes the same because of the size. But no, I decided to be weird and do this. But um, you see how intricately these lines turned out? And over here on the happy birthday, you can read all the letters and they look basically perfect. 
and it's great. See, the entire quality of the cookie cutter is kept right where it should be in the cookie. Before you start decorating your cookies, be sure to let them cool completely before you even try to remove them from the cookie sheet. Just, just let them cool off so that they don't break into tiny little pieces and then they'll solidify and you can decorate them and make them as beautiful as you want. For the taste test. Mmm. Mm-hmm. This is great. Not only does it not spread at all, it is also an extremely tasty sugar cookie. So I would recommend this cookie, this recipe to anybody who likes cookies at all. Whether you want to use this cookie cutter recipe because you ordered one of my fabulous cookie cutters, or whether you just like sugar cookies or cookies in general, or you just like sweet things, I really hope that this recipe helped you to make the best cookies you've ever had before. Please leave a like, subscribe, and tell everyone else about my channel. Bye!